Hey guys, welcome back to the Shipmate YouTube channel. This week I was looking around online a little bit and I see a lot of you guys are asking, why is my Amazon account getting shut down and what can I do to stop this? So today I'm going to be talking about 10 things you can do to stop your Amazon account from being shut down preemptively. This is going to be a big episode and I hope you'll join us. So guys, Amazon can shut your account down for a lot of reasons. Um, I find that most of them have to do with customer service. Um, there's some other reasons they can shut you down, such as selling you know, faulty product or used product or fulfillment errors. But a lot of them come from a customer service background. So today we're going to talk about 10 things that you, know, you can do preemptively before you get shut down to make sure that it doesn't happen to you. Now, if you follow these tips, it's going to save you about 90% of the time, and you're not going to have to worry about Amazon as much as you used to. So guys, before we get started, hit that like button, and let's begin. So guys, the first tip I got for you on how you can keep Amazon from shutting you down is to use quality packaging materials. That's right, you heard me, quality packaging materials. When you package an item whether it be at the manufacturer or even with the box that you're shipping it in if you're doing self-fulfillment. It's important to pack these things well. Pack them like they're ready to go through a war zone because these are going to get thrown around by the mail carriers. It's going to get thrown around by the Amazon picker or your picker or whoever. And some of these people, to put it bluntly, just don't care about you and your business. So you need to make sure that you care about you and your business since they're not going to do that for you. So guys, you want to make sure that, you know, you're using the best quality materials. Everything's packed correctly. It's packed tightly. You're using styrofoam, bubble wrap, you know, thick cardboard, everything you possibly can to protect your items. Because I find a lot of times complaints come in for something being broken or damaged during transit. And a lot of times that can lead to an A to Z claim. And you don't want that. It's worth the extra couple cents in packaging. Believe me. The second tip I have for you is you want to make sure that all your tracking information is accurate. This is important for every sales channel, not just Amazon. But you want to make sure that you're providing your customers with accurate tracking information so they know where their package is at all times during transit. It is very important that this information is correct because a lot of times when Amazon is deciding A to Z cases or uh, you know placing blame, they look at tracking numbers and they look to see who it was shipped with. Was it delivered on time? Was it shipped on time? And having accurate information is important. I know that sometimes, you know, when you're using an outside software, you might void a label. But it's important that you update your information with the most up-to-date label. If you change the label, make sure your tracking numbers are correct and make sure that every shipment you send has a tracking number. This is going to save you a lot of headaches on the back end. This third tip is something that I personally do. And I find that it really helps cut down on the amount of complaints I receive at Amazon. And that is, I put my contact information everywhere. Not only is it in my policies, it's on my packaging. I throw inserts in the box to tell you where you can redeem your warranty and a customer support email. And I make sure that everyone knows how to get a hold of me. Because if they're getting a hold of me, they're not getting a hold of Amazon. And I can most of the time resolve the issue without them ever having to escalate the case in Amazon. And this really cuts down on the number of A to Z claims and really helps you keep from getting shut down. My next tip is to use clearly defined return policies and any other policies you might have for like warranties and stuff like that. Make sure they're accurate. Make sure that they're updated as you change them. Make sure that they're available. You can point a customer to them, that they're visible. So that way... Amazon and your customer understands what your policy is and that everybody is in agreement. This can help reduce headaches and when you have an A to Z case or something open against you, you can direct Amazon to that policy that everybody can view. My fifth tip goes back to that customer service that I said is just so important. As you notice, it's a reoccurring theme and that is to have some great customer service templates. You want to pre-make these templates and you just don't want to cover the basics. You want to make sure that they are helpful, that they are friendly, that they leave room for them to contact you back. You want to make sure that you're giving a great template that gives great customer service. So 
Templates are something that I spend a lot of time on and then I use very complex templates that make sure that when I send it off to a customer, it covers their exact question and their exact need. Templates can be a great way to save time, but it's important that you have some good ones. You need some good ones to send out to people and keep them happy. My sixth tip is repetition, repetition, repetition. If you guys find that somebody is making the same complaint over and over and over about a product, you might mention it in your product listing. You might mention it in your description, but it's important to use repetition. Repetition is your friend. You want to repeat it as many times as it takes to stop getting those notifications because some people only read the title. Some people only read the description. Some people only look at pictures. So the more places you can put, you know, that repeated keyword is very important. It's very important to make sure that if there's something that's crucial to your product, that it is pointed out multiple times to avoid repeated problems. My next tip is to keep all receipts and records. If you buy some product, you buy some inventory, keep the receipt, keep the PO, keep the invoice. You send a truck to Amazon, you keep the receipt, you keep the PO, you keep the invoice. You know, you, you, every time you make a transaction, you wanna make sure that there's a paper trail and that you're keeping that paper trail because if you run into problems down the line, you're gonna need to produce this paper trail. Amazon's gonna wanna know where you got your products. Amazon's gonna know what trucking company you use. Amazon's gonna wanna know what shipping carrier you use. So anytime there's a document or a receipt, you wanna make sure you're holding on to that. So that way if you ever need it, you just go over to your filing cabinet or you know you go to your Google Drive and you pull that and you have it. Because it's better to have receipts, it's better to have proof, it's better to have evidence ahead of time than once the problem arises. And then you gotta go back through things and sometimes you miss information and you have a lot of problems. So always get receipts, always get documents, always get bills of lading, always have a paper trail. Paper trails are your friend. My eighth tip is a really big one. Make sure you have defined packing procedures, especially if you're fulfilled by merchant. If you're doing your own fulfillment or you have a 3PL doing your fulfillment, make sure that the expectations are known. Make sure that employees know what to do with your packaging. If you have any special requirements, if you have any special rules, make sure these policies are explained and enacted because if they're not, you're gonna have a lot of problems with breakage, you're gonna have a lot of problems with quality control, and you need to make sure that you're getting the right product to the right customer in perfect working condition. And like I said, these carriers can be rough. You know, these truck drivers can be rough. You need to protect yourself because you can't expect somebody else to do it. So I really recommend making sure you have clear cut procedures and that your employees or yourself are following those procedures. My next tip is if you're concerned, buy Amazon shipping. When you buy shipping through Amazon, Amazon trusts it a lot more than if you use your own carrier, or your own truck or whatever. So this kind of goes back to the paper trail thing, but buying your own shipping is not equal to buying Amazon shipping in Amazon's eyes. Amazon seems to prefer when you spend money with them and you know, Jeff Bezos makes more money. So, you know, we wanna keep them happy, we wanna keep spending money with them so that way they don't come and shut our accounts down. So, you know, using Amazon shipping is a, you know, a good way to get a little bit extra insurance than you might have if you're using the post office or you're using FedEx on your own uh, especially since uh, Amazon is not too friendly with those companies anymore. Finally, my biggest tip, and I saved this one for the end, it's controversial, is to be liberal with refunds. Listen, guys, you want to look for those red flags. You know, when a customer doesn't reach out to you but reaches out to Amazon instead, red flag. If a customer's emailing you every five seconds, red flag. If a customer's using angry language, red flag. These are all people who have no problem filing an A to Z claim, even if it's unfounded. So if you give them their refund and you lock everything up, they can't file that A to Z claim. So what you wanna do is you wanna be proactive. If they ask for a refund, you give it. If a message comes in from Amazon, you give them a refund. If they message you three, four, five times, don't mess around with replacements. 
Don't mess around with negotiating a partial refund. Just give them their money. That's what they want and send them on their way. And this is going to save you a lot of headaches. I've learned that this is the number one way that I personally get A to Z claims. And I've recently just started becoming very, very liberal with return policies because of this. Because, you know, you get somebody and they're unhappy. They're going to just not care about the repercussions to your business. And they're going to go out to Amazon and just have Amazon fight their bottles, get them their money, and go on their own way. So you can circumvent this by just, you know, cutting them a check and getting rid of them. So I highly recommend instituting a liberal return policy. So guys, I hope you learned a lot. I know I covered a lot here. There's a lot of things you can do to get out in front of this because, you know, when Amazon shuts down your account, it's not really fun. And a lot of times you got to involve third parties or write these big, long, um, big, long plans of action to get reinstated. And nobody wants to do that. So, you know, being proactive and making sure that your business is off on the right foot with Amazon is very, very important. I can't stress that enough. If you guys could give us a like, give us a share, give us a subscribe. Listen, we're trying to get to a thousand. We're really trying to do it. We need your help. So guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. We'll see you next week. We're posting every week and we hope you'll join us.